Welcome to another episode of Barroom and Saturdays. In this way, I decided to take a look at Anastasia, or Anastasia, by Golden Films. And I have to admit, out of the versions I've seen, this is definitely the worst in terms of animation. I mean, I've previously looked at the one by Fox Animation Studios, so that had Don Bluth behind it, so it's not surprising that one's definitely the best. Especially when the other version I've looked at before the Golden Films version was Burbank Animation Studios, which means it has a similar budget probably to the Golden Films version for the most part. But the Burbank version is still superior because it makes use, better use of symbology to actually get its point across, which makes it, you know, just stand out more than this one. And this film, you know, shamelessly reuses animation at points. Like, they basically have a song that plays near the beginning of the movie, which they then play near the end, and then reuse the footage, you know, for the, for the song, you know, later on they use at the beginning, which just feels lazy. I mean, using the songs to, like, try and bookend is maybe not the worst idea, but reusing the footage the way they did, you know, even if it's meant to represent Anast Anastasia, you know, remembering her past because she loses her memory in this movie near the end, still feels, you know, a bit lazy because they could have shown us, you know, other scenes of involving her past that we hadn't seen, you know, at the beginning of the film, potentially, you know, like, give us some new images. Even some new still images showing scenes would have been better than just shamelessly recycling footage from the beginning of the movie, in my opinion. I mean, I realize it's a low-budget effort, but that feels like it's just trying to stretch for padding, of t padding out time, you know, to hit that 50 minutes, and it kind of gets underneath my skin because of it a bit. There's also another song where they use old footage, you know, in the movie, um, near the middle of the film, you know, when Anastasia's, you know, singing about how much she loves this one soldier, and how they may never see each other again, so they both start singing as sort of a duet, with Anastasia starting things out with some lip syncing, and then they cut the clips, which annoys me in its own way, because I'm like, if you're gonna start with lip syncing the song, just, just stick with that, in my opinion, and if you're just gonna use clips to showcase, you know, moments they interacted, and then do that, but don't do both, because it just irritates me, because I'm like, why aren't they getting back into proper lip-syncing on this song? I mean, if I wanted to watch bad lip-syncing, I can go play Final Fantasy X or Xenosaga on the PS2, because the lip-syncing you know, was originally intended for, you know, Japanese voice actors, so when English voice actors, you know, are doing the, are providing the lines, you know, they're nowhere near synced up with the lip flaps. Something they didn't really try and fix until like Final Fantasy 13 or something. Because you're like, no, we got the budget, we can go back in, you know, more easily, I guess, try and spend money to edit that stuff. But, ugh. And then there are certain points during that song where they use a few clips that are like from later in the movie. Not not super later, but, you know, still a bit later than what, where the song ends at. Which kind of just makes me think of uh, the next mutation, you know, for the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Because they did two clip shows in a one season, you know, live TV series. And one of the clip shows shows a scene that was from the next episode. Why they didn't catch that in editing, I don't know. Or maybe at that point they already knew the show was screwed and they just didn't care and just left it in there anyway. So yeah, there's just too much reused footage for my liking. As far as the voice acting goes, Anastasia and Rasputin are pretty solid. But everyone else is kind of more passable to meh, you know. Like they, they're turning a they're turning a performance, but not a particularly impressive one because I guess they're there for a quick paycheck. I mean, it's not surprising, you know. It's a low low budget effort. So they can't really afford to pay people to say their lines, you know, for a bunch of times over and over and over again to get the best take. You know, like we need to pop this out fast and on time and on budget, so we can't afford, you know, to waste time redoing lines too much. So, a lot of the people didn't seem to really be that into it. I can't blame them. I also find the plot a bit incomplete. I mean, the setup for Anastasia and Alexander isn't that bad, you know, and how they met and start to grow feelings for each other. But at the same time, the stuff with Rasputin never really gets meaningfully resolved, really. Um, he gets brought in, you know, and helps cure, you know, the Ronald's youngest son, who probably had a issues with his blood clotting, you know, so if he if he started to bleed, he basically just keep bleeding nonstop, and they bring him in to fix, help him, which, you know, he does with his magic powers, which he has in this film, I guess, which basically involves just blowing pink smoke or whatever. 
Then they cut to him later on in the movie, you know, giving money, taking payments from the Bolsheviks to reveal, you know, troop movements and stuff, and helps overthrow the Romanovs, despite, you know, being allowed to, like, live in their house. He decides to betray them anyways. He's like, oh, you're so corrupt. I must, you know, get rid of you for the people. And then they show him again later in the film, you know, ordering the Romanovs to be executed because the English crown, you know, has offered to take them in, you know, for sanctuary purposes. Which feels a bit odd, because if I'm remembering his, my history correctly, the Ronas did actually send out letters asking the English crown to take them in, and the English crown told them no. So they decided to somewhat reverse course here and then have Rasputin or the Ronas killed because the English crown was asking to take them in. Which just feels... It's, it's, it's just historically ac inaccurate for multiple reasons, so it feels a bit off putting, you know, seeing it, I guess, but I don't know why I care too much about the historical accuracy on the movie, considering, you know, it's an animated children's film. I'm not, shouldn't really expect it, but it's just weird they'd even bring up, you know, you know the English crown offering to even take them in, you know, when it's not historically accurate at all, and Rasputin would have been dead long before such an offer would have been even made anyway. <sighs> But yeah, they end this film, they have Rasputin or them put to death after such a letter arise. And then his last scene, you know, near the last, like, 40 or 30% of the film is leading the people in a song about how the peasants are now king. And then he ends with how Rasputin is now king. You know, I'm like, how long do you think that's going to last? But we never see that plot thread resolve. We never see Rasputin, you know, murdered by the public now that he's now the peasant's king. You know, because I imagine he'd be just as bad as the people, you know, he helped overthrow earlier in the film. But no, we, we just drop that plot thread, you know, the focus on Alexander and Anastasia's, you know, marriage and efforts, you know, to restore her memories. You know, from the trauma she suffered from being shot at, you know, and the rest of her family being murdered. And yeah, she only survives being shot because uh, a medal her father gave her early on in the film, you know, blocks the bullet they tried to kill her with. Because I guess they only shot at her once. Ugh. So yeah, Th this is definitely not the strongest you know movie I've seen covering th the story of Anastasia. You know, it's, I mean, it's not you know obviously be the most historically accurate, but there's just just you know it's weaker in terms of animation. You know, the voice acting is okayish for the most part, with some decent perform with some good performances from like your main character and what's meant to be like a main antagonist that just disappears, oddly enough. In terms of music, though, it's pretty good. Though that's because it's using a lot of pieces from like the Nutcracker and other, you know, classical works, which help bolster it up a bit, you know. But all in all, you know, it's it's one of the more, you know, forgivable Golden Films movies. So I'd say just, you can kind of just pass over it for, you know, the Burbank version, if you're looking for a cheap version of Anastasia. So next time, then. See ya. Oh, forget it. <laughs> Oopsie, poopsie. I bumped my little headski-witski.